Hello, in this video, we're going to work out this indefinite integral. We have the indefinite integral of 1 minus sine x all divided by cosine x with respect to x. Let's jump into it right away and work it out. Solution. So my first thought was to make a substitution to let u equal cosine x, but if you do that, then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and that's not here because in the numerator we have 1 minus sine. So that's not really going to work. Another idea is to break it up as follows. This is the integral of, it's one over cosine, one over cosine x, and then we have minus, and this is sine x over cosine x. Then we have a parentheses, parentheses, and a dx. So now we can use some really basic trig identities. So this is equal to the integral of. So 1 over cosine is the secant function. We have parentheses secant x minus, and then sine x over cosine x is tangent x. And then we have another parentheses and a dx. So here's where we have to invoke our super powerful formulas. So there's two formulas. I'm going to write them over here on the left just to refresh your memory. First formula says if you have the integral of secant x with respect to x dx, this is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus our constant of integration capital C. And the other formula we need is the one for the integral of tangent. The integral of tangent x with respect to x, this is just equal to minus ln absolute value of cosine x plus c. And you're probably wondering how I remember these because I know how to work them out. So for example, to integrate secant, you basically multiply by secant plus tangent over secant plus tangent, and then you make a u substitution. To integrate tangent, you write it as sine over cosine, and then let you let u be cosine, and you end up with this. Now we can apply these formulas to our actual problem, and that will give us the final answer. So this is equal to integrating secant, we have the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x, and we have the absolute value, and then here, because we already have a minus tangent, we have a minus in the formula, it's gonna be plus, ooh, there's something else we can do, absolute value cosine x plus c. So you could leave it like this, but you know, I just, I just saw something we can do, and I think we should do it because it's really, really cool. So I don't know if you remember, but there's a formula that says if you have the natural log of, let's say, A, plus the natural log of, say, B, that's equal to the natural log of A times B. That's called the product rule for logarithms. So you can use that here, and you basically just multiply secant plus tangent times cosine. This is equal to the natural log, the absolute value, of, and it's going to be secant x plus tangent x times cosine x. And this is really, you know, perhaps an optional step, but I think it's really cool, so I'm going to keep going and show you, because you could certainly stop here, but I think this is going to get a lot better. So this is equal to, so this is the natural log of the absolute value, and secant is 1 over cosine, but I'm going to go ahead and distribute it, so it'll be secant x times cosine x plus, and then tangent x times cosine x. And then we have the absolute value bar and the plus c. Okay, so all I did there was just basically distribute the cosine. Secant times cosine looks okay. Tangent times cosine looks okay. All is good. And so now we can use basic trig identities, like really basic ones. This is the natural log, absolute value. Secant is 1 over cosine. That's times cosine plus, and then we have tangent, which is sine over cosine. That's times cosine. We have the absolute value and then the plus C. And now we get some wonderful cancellation, which is really cool. This is equal to the natural log, absolute value. So it's going to be one plus sine of X, absolute value plus C. So that would be your final answer, 
in this problem. Pretty cool, right? So it's a lot more work just if you want to simplify it to get to this point. Um, you don't necessarily have to go this far. You could have certainly stopped up here. So I just saw it and I thought, oh, maybe something will happen. And in fact, something did. This problem is really all about just knowing these formulas. And my biggest piece of advice I have for anyone watching this video uh, who was stuck on this problem is to just know these formulas, right? It's worth memorizing. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck.